This is the solution to the center of gravity, center of mass example problem. While sitting in a marketing meeting for an ad campaign to show off a balanced diet, Durbel McDillett came up with an idea to emphasize a balanced diet. He thought to start by balancing fruit and bread on a board. Your job as the intern is to figure out where to hold up the board. So here's the board and here's all the fruit all kind of placed. What I need to do is do a little bit of research. So what I have is I have the weight of all the objects and I have the distances that I'm going to place them on the board. So I've got the apple, an orange, I've got the center of mass of the board, that's kind of right in the middle of the board, and then I've got this loaf of bread off at the far end and its weight as well. And I've got to figure out with my red arrow where to put my hand and how far over that is so I can balance everything. And I really don't know if it's in here after 70 centimeters or not, I'm just kind of putting it there on the diagram. To begin with, I know my equation for finding the center of mass. The distance to the center of mass is the sum of all the mass and distances, in other words, it's related to torque, divided by the sum of all the masses. So when I look at this, I'm looking at his mass, I'm talking about center of mass. Now remember too, the center of mass, center of gravity on the surface of the Earth, they're going to be at the same spot. So this also works for finding the center of gravity. But the cool thing is, if I have the mass in kilograms, if I want grams, I just multiply it by a number. If I want weight in pounds or newtons, I multiply kilograms by a number. So because of this, and I've got this same M at the top and the bottom, the units actually don't matter as long as they're consistent. So I really don't need to convert newtons over into grams or kilograms. I could just put it in as it's stated up here and calling the mass in newtons because it's just a factor of change which is divided out in the top and bottom of my fraction. Next, the distance. Well, the standard SI unit for distance is meters. But here's something cool about this. So if I use a different distance, like centimeters, inches, or feet, my answer will come out with the same units. So as long as I'm consistent and always using the same units, I'll get the same unit out in my final answer. So that's nice. That means I don't need to convert my centimeters over into meters. I can just leave them in centimeters. So when I'm using this formula, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the newtons, and I'm going to leave the centimeters when I'm putting my numbers in without doing any conversions. All right, so here's my formula. And here's how we're going to apply it. When I'm summing up with the mass and distances, 1 newton times 10 centimeters, 2 times 30 centimeters, 3 newtons times 40 centimeters, 7 newtons times 70 centimeters, divided by the sum of all the, the weights. Now I'm taking my pivot point as being from the far left. I can really take anywhere on the board, but this is really simple and, and always works, makes everything positive as well. When I do the math, I find out that it's 52 centimeters. So my x is actually 52 centimeters, that's where I need to hold it up right there at the center of mass of this whole collection of information. So that's where I've got to apply my upward force. And remember, whatever units you put in for the distance, you get the same unit out for the distance.